Welcome to another session, and we are going to talk about NGLEX Pharmacology today. Uh, we are going to focus on uh, one medication and see how our priority, the critical thinking, and the clinical judgment is going to be applied. So this is an application question in terms of pharmacology. Here we go. A clinic nurse received a family call reporting 104 degree temperature, muscle stiffness, and confusion on a client who has been started on flufenazine recently. What is the most appropriate response by the nurse? Number one, hold next dose of medication and arrange for liver function test. Number two, administer acetaminophen and a muscle relaxant. Number three, increase the fluid intake to prevent dehydration. And number four, transport client to nearest emergency room. So we can select only one answer, and this is more like a prioritization question. So what should we do? Now, how do we answer this? How do we apply the theory, the knowledge we have about pharmacology and about this medicine? How do we apply that into this question? So number one thing we need to remember or we have to know is what is this medication used for? And from the name, probably you have an idea, or if you have been um, going through our uh, test books and our classes, you know there is a lot of medications which are given there, which is very important for our NCLEX preparation. So flufenazine comes under antipsychotics. It is an antipsychotic medication. Now, if you know that, what are the clues given here? recognize the cues which are given in the question and then make the hypothesis, prioritize and take action. That's how clinical judgment works. So what are the cues given here? What are the important things which are going to help us figure out how can I apply the best method, the best response, right? That's what they're asking. So the cue number one is this medicine. This is something to focus on this medicine and we know it's an antipsychotic medication. So if someone is starting on an antipsychotic medication recently, that is another cue given here. They have been started recently. And right now what is going on with the patient? The patient is having high fever, 104 degree temperature fever, that is high fever, muscle stiffness, and confusion. So I would say there is high temperature, there is rigidity, muscle stiffness, and there is level of consciousness changes. On a client who started recently on an antipsychotic medicine, that should make that connection, connecting the dots. What is that known as? Is that important that this is going on? What should I do? What is the situation? Now, if you remember our teaching from the mental health class, you might remember some of the things we talked about. And the psychotic medications, which are normally used for some of the medication, mental illness like schizophrenia and bipolar disorders, they have a very life-threatening emergency kind of rare disease complication which can happen. That is neuroleptic malignant syndrome. Now, what happens in neuroleptic malignant syndrome? High-grade fever, rigidity, level of consciousness changes, now, level of consciousness changes can be confusion, disorientation, restlessness, anything like that, and autonomic dysfunction. What do we mean by that? Autonomic dysfunction, that's where you will see the heart might also be affected. People can get labile blood pressure. What is labile means? Labile is like changing. They might have blood pressure going up and down, and then that could be really bad. They can even get dysarrhythmia. They can get tachymia, tachycardia, celoria. What is that, celoria? That is drooling and or excessive salivation and drooling. And when that happens, it's mostly neurological issue. Diaphoresis, which is like excessive sweating, flushing, like they will have that flushing sensation, skin pallor and incontinence. These things can happen 
Let me just write that down. It's drooling. This can happen because of autonomic dysfunction. Why? As part of neuroleptic malignant syndrome. What caused it? The antipsychotic caused it. Is that okay? It is not okay. It is a life-threatening emergency. Now, these symptoms can occur within two weeks or maybe 30 days of starting, you know, up to one month of having this medication. And we have to do all the supportive treatment for them. But first thing, first time, it is a life-threatening emergency. Now, what do we do? They have to call 911. They have to come to the emergency room because our question had another cue here. It was the family who were calling. So the patient is not in the hospital. Patient is at home and the family is telling, oh my God, my patient is having, my, my husband, my brother, my father, my wife, or whosoever is the patient is having high fever, muscle rigidity, and they are stiff. I mean, they can even get into seizures, right? So it's an emergency condition. Now we have that information in our brain and we are going to connect the dots and figure out what is the best thing to do because we know the cues now. Number one says, hold next dose of medication and arrange for a liver function test. That seems like okay thing to do because if something is bad going on, when the patient is taking the medication, I really don't want to give another dose, right? So that's a great thing, but is that enough? That's the question, because we are looking for an emergency situation here, and we are looking for the most appropriate response. Our question says most appropriate response. That means you can choose only one, which is mostly going to be your priority. Now, if this is a priority application question, is that going to be a priority? Probably not. I'm going to hold the next dose. Okay, okay, kind of thing. Arrange for liver function test. Yes, flufenacin can be liver toxic. Actually, we don't give it to people who have very bad liver conditions. So it could be liver toxic and it is great to have a liver function test values so we can you know, see how it is working. But is that the most important thing here? Maybe not. Let me put this as an okay, okay kind of thing. So, because, you know, I, I know I can choose only one, so I better choose what is the most important thing, right? Because it's a priority. So I'm not just keeping it there yet. Second one says, administer acetaminophen and a muscle relaxant. Seems like an okay thing to do because it seems like there is a fever and muscle stiffness. So these medications are going to help, but... That is level of consciousness changes. I don't even know if we can take that medicine or is that going to be enough? If I go with that, I'm missing the point. This is a life-threatening emergency. This is not something I want to manage at home with some kind of over-the-counter medications. No, they need to come, right? So this is not going to be my option. The third one, increase the fluid intake to prevent dehydration. Not much very, very associated with what is there in the question, right? So not my answer because flufenacin and with that going on, it is not dehydration I'm worried about. It is life-threatening emergency I'm worried about. It's absorbed dysarrhythmia and the seizures and all the problems which is neurologically going on. That is what I'm worried about. So this is not going to be my best option. The other one says transport the client to the nearest emergency room. Well, that seems like the best thing to do. That is going to save the life of the patient because I know from my clinical judgment, right? You as an RN, you know from the clinical judgment that this is neuroleptic malignant syndrome, not to be ignored. I need to help the patient. What do I do as an RN? Get the patient to the nearest emergency room. So that is going to be my response, right? As a response, as your response, the nurse response is transport the client to the nearest emergency room. All right. So that's how you answer the prioritization questions, application questions, which are going to help you pass your exam. All right. See you next time.